Hello everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode I'm going to be showing you guys how to speed up your editing. Because uh, especially in the day of uh, 4K footage with everybody getting 4K footage, uh, I mean, and, and consumers getting access to 4K footage like on drones and their phones and uh, and other devices, recording devices as well. Uh, sometimes when people try to edit that 4K footage, they're realizing it taking a toll on their system is really slowing things down. So I'm going to show, in, in the next couple episodes, I'm going to be showing you some uh, proxy options. I'm going to be showing you a few different options. In this specific episode, I'm showing you how to transcode uh, your footage uh, and turn it into optimized media. Because what we're using here, this DJI footage here that I've got, uh, at least with my, I've got the DV, uh, D DJI Mavic Pro, and with that uh, camera, uh, it shoots into a codec called H.264. Uh, on my on my specific camera, I can change it to uh, MP4 or movie or MOV file, QuickTime movie file. But essentially, both of those formats or extensions use the exact same codec and if you want to look at what that codec name is you right click on your clip and you go to properties and it shows right here this is actually an mp4 an mov is just called a wrapper so you can do it as an mp4 or mov and it doesn't make a huge difference uh in, in the quality it won't change the quality at all uh because they are both going to be h.264 H.264 is considered a non-optimized media. What that basically, what they're trying to do with this is with the, with the current technology, with these small little teeny SD cards you're plugging into the and into your cameras, into your drones, into your phones, and recording on, uh, those are only capable of, of writing uh, up to a certain speed. Uh, so essentially, uh, what they're trying to do is compress the footage. They're trying to maintain the quality of the footage, but still compressing it by removing color data that, that it's not using, uh, that your images are not using. So essentially, you end up with a really nice looking uh, product, but a very, very small file. That type of compression and encoding is what we call interframe compression. I want to show you the difference between interframe and intraframe compression, uh, two different types of compression that's used to remove uh, color data from a file. So here I've got both these names, interframe and intraframe. So the goal with interframe uh, compression is trying to, once again, maintain the same quality while making the file size uh, small. And intraframe is a little bit different. Let's show, explain what's happening with interframe uh, compression, first of all. All right, draw a little line there and say, this is our footage that we're recording. Let's put a little notch in for every single frame of image that's taken. Like if you're shooting like 24 frames per second, each one of these notches represents a frame. So what's happening is there's a certain amount of color information that is stored in a frame of of, of video footage. That color information, what the recorder will do, what your camera will do, is it will set a keyframe on a specific frame, and this single frame will contain a certain amount of color data for that shot. Now what will happen for the next subsequent frames, especially if the shot is looking kind of the same, if, if this is a shot of the sky and it's got a lot of blue, the next following frames will borrow the color information from this single keyframe back here. And the more that these uh, following frames can borrow the color information from this uh, keyframe, it's going to minimize the size. You won't have to have color information for, for every frame. So say the shot suddenly switches up and the sky is no longer blue, it like the camera pans and it goes to like something with a lot of greens or, or reds in it. Uh, all of a sudden the camera will detect that and set a new keyframe and then the next several uh, frames, as long as those are kind of similar, have similar colors, will borrow that color information from that one keyframe. As a standard, you can do it by like every 20 frames or or, or just or when necessary. Uh, now intra, intra frame is a different type of encoding. What we've got here, got the same thing with all these uh, individual frames being recorded along a video line here. But with IntraFrame, you have uh, color information for every individual frame. So that means the size of your file is going to be a lot bigger because every single frame contains its own color information. Now where the benefit of IntraFrame comes in is computer processing, which is kind of a kind of a big deal. When you are trying to play back this footage right here, and honestly H.264, that codec, is really meant as a, that's some great handwriting there I did with Photoshop there, H.264 is really kind of, is really meant to be a delivery format. It's not necessarily uh, what was supposed to be a recording format, one that, uh, a codec that you were supposed to record into. It just kind of caught on with consumer, especially with uh, consumer products, because you could buy uh, smaller, cheaper SD cards, and uh, you could get a lot more footage onto those cards, and there's a bunch of different reasons why this kind of took off. But in the professional world, this is very, very rarely used as a recording format. In the very least, 
usually Apple ProRes 422 is kind of the base uh, professional level that people are using to record their footage to. But a lot of cameras, if you have AVC codec, H.264 codec, MPEG codecs, a whole bunch of different types of codecs, uh, these will be considered interframe or what I like to call non-optimized media. Now, intraframe is optimized media, and what I mean by that is when a computer is processing and it's trying to play back this footage, especially if you got 4K footage and you got some slower hard drives or a slower system, uh, the computer is going to be doing a lot more processing because as it's playing through this footage here, it's going to uh, display this frame but it has to access the previous frame for the color formation. Then it does the next frame and then it has to access this keyframe once again and there's a lot more processing going on so sometimes you get uh, with H.264 footage your computer starts chugging and having a difficult time playing the footage back. But with intraframe oftentimes you will have larger files but there's a lot more efficiency in being able to play back just individual single frames where it goes on to the next frame just the, then the next frame then the next frame without have to, having to go back and reference a, a keyframe. It's a lot more efficient and the footage will play playback a lot better. So this brings us down to the point that I want to make about transcoding. Transcoding is converting your files to a different codec, to an optimized media. Now the problem with this is you're going to be eating up a lot more hard drive space. So that that is there's some pros and cons away, but I, I kind of want to demonstrate a little bit. Now and what I've done here is I've loaded some of these drone clips onto one of my spinny drives as I call them. It's one of those 7200 RPM uh, external drives. So this is really going to kind of go into a little bit of a worst case scenario here. Well and also if you have a crappy video card and a crappy processor on, on your computer are also, also some other factors that can slow things down but I'm going to demonstrate off of a kind of a crappy hard drive here how th this will improve my editing if I transcode this transcode this footage. So here I've got this clip here that was shot on my drone and uh, I'm just going to press play and it's taking a second there it finally jumped and now it starts playing back and it's playing back seems to be doing okay here and if I pause and let's hit J to rewind and then I'm going to hit K to stop and I'm going to hit L to forward. Uh oh, now it's starting to freeze up and I'm going to hit L again. And I'm going to, now, now it's really starting to slow down. And watch this, even when I grab my playhead and I drag through this, it gets really choppy and chuggy. And if I hurry and move it to a different part of the, part of the image, it takes sometimes two or three seconds for it to update and jump to that image. See, look at that. It takes about two seconds, two seconds. It takes sometimes two to four seconds for it to update my image. And even when I'm rewinding and forwarding and scrubbing like this, it's very, very choppy and it's not smoothly playing back the footage. So if you want to have less issues with editing, oftentimes trans transcoding the footage will help. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight all my footage here and I'm going to transcode this media. I'm going to hit Control M to export out my media from Premiere. Once again, I got this in a folder called Original uh, Footage. I'm going to convert this to, to Apple ProRes. So I'm going to go to a quick time format, which is the Apple codec, and I'm going to go to Preset and I'm going to change this to ProRes 422. ProRes 422 is the recommended quality because since this is kind of the, um, the base base level of, of professional video quality. I'm going to do Pro, ProRes 422 and I'm going to have this just match the source. I'm going to make everything the same here so it doesn't change my resolution, it doesn't change my frame rate, doesn't change aspect, um, doesn't change anything else on there. I am going to uncheck export audio though because uh, my DGI files do not have audio. If you're shooting like cell phone footage, you probably don't want to uncheck that. You probably want to leave it the same and take the and use the audio as well. So I'm trying to match the the um, the nature of these of these video clips that don't have audio recorded onto them. Because if you record audio with a drone, all you're going to get is just a bunch of uh, buzzing noises from the from the blade spinning. Okay, so now I'm going to hit Q and send it over to Media Encoder, which will do the encoding for me. So we are going to convert these files or transcode them. It's called transcoding. We're going to transcode them from H.264 to Apple ProRes 422. All right, I'm going to change the location of these files here. So I'm going to select all of my media. I'm going to do Control A to select all. I'm going to click on one of these names here and change my location. I'm going to go to my drone folder and go to transcoded footage and dump it into the transcoded footage. Now that I've got the different location, I'll press play. And while this is encoding, one thing that I, I, I can quickly mention is what they call bit depth, color depth, bandwidth. There's a whole bunch of different names for it, uh, but it basically kind of shows, it basically shows how large your files are going to be. On DGA's website, they're a little bit vague on, on the very specifics of their codecs, but they do mention that they do record in an H.264 video, is, is one thing they mention here. So they do mention the codec that it, that it records into, but right here they say the max video bit rate is 60 megabits per second. So I imagine that that's going to be what the, the maximum uh, resolution, their true 4K resolution here at 24 frames per second encodes that is at 60 megabits per second, which is going to be very small files, relatively speaking. 
Uh, but we go to Apple ProRes site. If you if you Google ProRes white paper, it will bring up their white paper that has all their codec information down on page 25 of their PDF. Uh, you can go down to your 4K footage here, and I can look at 24 frames per second, and I go over to megabits per second to see how, how much uh, larger the file is going to be, and whoa, look at that. So if I go under ProRes 422 right here, and I go over onto uh, 4K, 24P, move over, look at how big this is going to be. It's 500 megabytes, which is huge. And even though this is going to be a lot, uh, that's like, geez, uh, 10 times, uh, uh, close to 9 times, 10 times the the, uh, the size of our original file there. Uh, even though that's going to be a lot larger file, this is going to play back a lot smoother than the original file, than my original H.264, because this is now optimized media. So I'm going to let this finish encoding my footage, uh, then we'll come back and show you the results. Okay, we're back. Media Encoder is done with that footage that I just exported, and I'm going to import that folder. Now I'm going to get the transcoded footage folder, import that fo folder. I'm going to drop one of these in a timeline here. Let's drop this longer one in here. And now I'm going to drop... So this first one here is the original footage. And then the next one that I'm going to drop in here... And notice it's exactly the same length and everything. It's a duplicate of this file, but it's just a different codec. Or it's a different uh, codec, so it's been transcoded. So those are the exact same codec, exact same length. So these are different codecs. This one's been transcoded. That's my transcoded one. This is my original one right there. And let's kind of check out the performance on these things. Uh, so as I start to move my playhead through the timeline, look how chuggy that is. It just like it does not smoothly show the shot. It doesn't smoothly scrub through the shot. Watch what happens when I move to the new ProRes shot. As I grab this and drag it through, it's keeping up a lot better with this. And once again, this is on a really slow hard drive of mine, and it's also, and I'm also recording uh, right now my screen, my, and, and I'm also recording uh, this session, so it's taking up a bit of my video card. So right now, this thing is a heck of a lot smoother than the playback on on this H.264 item right here. Watch what happens if I do my JKL here. I do J to rewind. It takes a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh my gosh. And now it just started going and it's chugging. It's not even keeping up. So as I stop, it'll take it a second to jump to that back to that frame. 10, 9, 8, 7. Oh my gosh. It's frozen up. There it goes. That took a long time. <laughs> So this has taken a long time. This has taken a lot of processing on this clip right here. It's a 4K file, and it is on a slow hard drive. So uh, when I put this on a solid state hard drive, it plays a lot better. So one thing I'd really recommend doing, if you can afford it, get a solid get solid state uh, drives, install them in your computer, or get externals, or purchase external solid state drives. And then if you can, what helps as well is getting a USB C connection uh, to your computer. If you don't have a USB C uh, connection on your PC, you can install it as a PCI card inside your system, and then and if with those external hard drives, they act just like they're an internal hard drive through USB-C, and it's really nice and fast. But if you're stuck with slower computer, uh, with a slower computer, now watch this with my ProRes footage. I hit J, it rewinds immediately. If I hit K, it stops. L, it goes forward immediately. And this is not chugging. Now I take my playhead and scrub through this, and it just like updates the frames really, really quickly. And I'm going to have a lot better editing experience with this footage than I am with uh, my original footage. And you can pretty much get rid of your original footage. You can dump it if you want to, uh, or you can just back it up and keep it on a hard drive. But this, once again, this process does take more hard drive space. In fact, let's the last thing that we're going to do here is look at the is look at the size of these files here. So my original footage here, uh, this is all those all three of those clips. This is 1.64 gigabytes, so about one and a half gigabytes for all three of those clips. Now I move over my transcoded footage, and holy crap, 13 gigabytes. So it's it it's nearly 10 times the size. A lot larger size takes up a lot larger, a lot, lot more hard drive space, but that you will have a better editing experience as a result is one of the is one of the pros of using of using transcoding. So if you got a lot of editing to do, I would recommend either doing this or doing proxy, which is going to be the next episode that I'm covering. But that there is your kind of brief explanation and introduction into uh, using optimized media versus non-optimized media, and just some of the pros and cons uh, with, with with using both both footage. So well, cool. If you have any questions, please post them. And thanks for watching.